In this lesson, we're going to learn how to assess aortic stenosis using CMR. Although CMR can play an important role in the assessment of aortic stenosis, echocardiography nevertheless remains the cornerstone for this. Echocardiography is widely available, is relatively inexpensive, and provides us with detailed hemodynamic assessment about the aortic valve. Nonetheless, CMR offers us valuable information regarding aortic valve morphology and can be particularly helpful for identifying bicuspid aortic valves, particularly when echo images are suboptimal. Like echocardiography, CMR can provide information not just on valve morphology, but also hemodynamic information on flow velocity and therefore allow the calculation of peak gradient. CMR does provide more accurate information about aortic anatomy, left ventricular hypertrophy, including the calculation of left ventricular mass, and also precise quantification of left ventricular systolic function. So let's take a look at some examples. Let's begin with the assessment of valve morphology. This is a still frame from a Cine CMR image. This is a free chamber view with the left ventricle here the mitral valve and the left atrium, and we have the left ventricular outflow tract here, we have the aortic valve and the aortic root. And in this view we can inspect the aortic valve cusps, uh, as in echocardiography in the parasternal long axis view, we have the right coronary cusp here, and we have the non-coronary cusp here. And we can assess cusp thickness, uh, in this patient the cusps are thickened, and in the cine image, we can also assess cusp mobility, as we'll see in a moment. We can also measure aortic root dimensions, and we traditionally do this at the level of the aortic valve annulus, at the level of the sinuses valsalva, and at the sinotubular junction. So here's the cine CMR image from which that still frame was taken, so we can now see everything in, in motion. So we can now assess the mobility of the aortic valve cusps and we can see how those thickened cusps are very restricted in their mobility. We can actually see the forward flow, the jet of flow um, uh, going through the valve and entering the aorta during systole. Um, we can also look at the left ventricle and we can assess left ventricular size and systolic function. We can also look for any evidence of aortic regurgitation. Uh, there's no significant regurgitation present in this particular patient. Here's another view of the aortic valve. This is known as the coronal left ventricular outflow tract or coronal LVOT view. This is a view that's unique to CMR. It doesn't really have an echo equivalent. And in this view, we have the left ventricle here. We have the aortic valve just here again with thickened uh, cusps, and we have the aortic root and ascending aorta just here. And using this view, we can again measure the aortic root dimensions at the level of the aortic annulus, at the sinus of valsalva, and at the sinotubular junction. It should be remembered that the normal values for aortic root dimensions are different depending upon whether we measure them in the free chamber view that we saw a moment ago, or whether we measure them in the coronal LVOT view here. Um, the European Society of Cardiology publishes normal ranges for both sets of views. And here's the cine image from which that still frame was taken. So again, we have the left ventricle, we have the aortic valve and aortic root. And again, we can appreciate that the aortic valve cusps are thickened with markedly impaired cusp mobility. And then we have the short axis view of the aortic valve, where we see the aortic valve on FAS. Uh, the aortic valve in this image is just here. This is a still frame taken from a cine image. And we can see that it's a pseudo-bicuspid aortic valve. Uh, we have two fused cusps here, um, which uh, are joined by median raphe. And then we have another cusp here. In terms of identifying the cusps, uh, we can either look for the um, origins of the coronary arteries or we can use the intraatrial septum, which is just here. And we know that the cusp which is adjacent to the intraatrial septum is the non-coronary cusp. So the intraatrial septum is here and this cusp is the non-coronary cusp. 
and that makes this for right coronary cusp towards the patient's right and this for left coronary cusp towards the patient's left. So non, right and left. And we can also see the orifice of this valve. This is a stenosed pseudobicuspid aortic valve. And we can also undertake direct planimetry of the orifice to calculate the orifice area. Here's the Cine CMR image. So again, we have the aortic valve seen on FAS. We have these two fused cusps with a median raphe in between. And we have the non-coronary cusp here. And we can see that this pseudobicuspid aortic valve is significantly stenosed with a greatly reduced valve orifice area during systole. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.